Prime Minister, good morning. Thank you so much to be with us uh, today. So we are going to do it in English after those uh, three languages introductions. I am Nicolas Dufour, I'm the CEO of BPI France. So BPI France is a sort of a big HDB for France. We, we have deployed in 2021 uh, 25 billion euros for France in loans, in equity. Basically, we do a lot of consulting. And we have a belief, which is that uh, in the challenges that are ahead of us, for Greece, for France, the same challenges, actually, which are debt, growth, inflation, and so forth, entrepreneurs will play a, a major role, a central role. So the objective of BPI France, for France at least, is to double the number of entrepreneurs, because the more we have entrepreneurs, the best we will be, that at least for sure, in that world of uh, uncertainties. And uh, we also think that there are zillions of things we can do in Europe by better connecting the ecosystems of entrepreneurs, SMEs, startup, tech, non-tech, across the continent. We think that uh, by connecting the development banks, we can achieve that dream. And this is why we have been working with our Greek colleagues in the past two years intensively. We work with other colleagues in Europe. And we have that vision that uh, if we were to have very strong development banks across the continent totally working together, we would increase the, G the GDP of Europe, certainly. I, I, I don't give a quantum. I'm in presence of the European Commission. Thank you to be present today. And we have 10 nationalities uh, which are present through their development banks uh, with us this morning. But what is for sure is that by connecting the countries, we will create value. So thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, to be there. I, I just wanted maybe to ask you, what is, your, what is your vision for the development of entrepreneurship in Greece to start with? Well, uh, first of all, um, uh, congratulations on the signing of this uh, important uh, agreement. I do need to point out that it is taking place in a historic venue. Um, uh, this is a venue where 43 years ago um, the accession of Greece into the European economic community was actually signed. Uh, and uh, the initiative to bring together development banks from uh, various European countries seems to me to be a very sensible idea. I would also like uh, to congratulate uh, uh, the Hellenic Development Bank uh, uh, and its uh, ecosystem for the great work they have done uh, in very, very difficult uh, times. Uh, from the moment uh, we came into power, it was my firm uh, belief that uh, this government needed to support the entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, in, in Greece. Uh, we were emerging from um, uh, a, a very deep and very painful uh, crisis that also had a, as a result, as a, probably a positive side effect, the changing of attitudes uh, amongst uh, younger Greeks. Uh, the belief that uh, entrepreneurship uh, is an appropriate way for young Greeks to pursue. And what we tried to do, very simply, was to liberate all these entrepreneurial forces within the Greek society uh, because we always took note of the fact that Greek entrepreneurs did particularly well outside Greece, but for some reason they were not doing particularly well in Greece. So we did, you know, obvious things, strengthening, you know, the financing um, uh, arm of, uh, uh, of the state. We lowered taxes uh, significantly, taxes on capital, taxes on dividends. Um, uh, taxes on, uh, uh, on labor, we simplified uh, regulation, uh, and uh, we made sure that the various cogs in the entrepreneurial ecosystem cooperated in a more constructive way. And what is very interesting is that we have, uh, you know, first uh, very impressive success stories. Greece has uh, numerous unicorns uh, uh, already. Um, and these are success stories which will further uh, inspire uh, new entrepreneurs uh, to pursue a similar path. We've also started teaching entrepreneurship in schools, which I consider to be particularly uh, important. Uh, we have, uh, you know, fantastic, uh, um, um, uh, uh, you know, public-private initiatives such as the Junior Achievement uh, Competition, which uh, um, uh, fosters this entrepreneurial spirit. Um, uh, at a much uh, younger age. And overall, I am um, uh, you know, very, very uh, confident 
uh, that uh, this entrepreneurial ecosystem is really going to take off. Uh, and our goal is uh, uh, that at some point in the not so distant future, technology should contribute uh, you know, 10% of Greek GDP. And this is perfectly doable. If you look at sectors such as uh, um, um, uh, you know, big data, such as clean tech, such as, as fintech, lots of very interesting things are happening and foreign investors are taking notice of what is happening uh, in, um, uh, in Greece and, our, and uh, Greek companies are beginning to attract um, uh, significant um, uh, capital. So um, uh, people are actually voting with their feet. They, are, they believe uh, in, in this uh, Greek um, growth story and, you know, uh, at the end of the day, our main goal was, was always to foster a sustainable growth uh, a sustainable growth needs to be led um, uh, and needs to be driven through private uh, investment. And in spite of all the difficulties that we had to, to deal with, you know, including the most recent you know, uh, war uh, in Ukraine, we remain committed uh, to the goal of creating sustainable growth uh, in Greece in those sectors where we can be competitive. Absolutely, and we, I must say we're all extremely impressed by what's happening here and the capital inflows, which is a consequence of uh, the rising reputation of the ecosystem of Greece, that's for sure. Now the question for, for us in France with, through BPI, and I suppose it's the same in Greece and other countries, is how to accelerate that, uh, to be at par with uh, the reality of the challenges that we, are, uh, we have ahead of us. So I, I must say that the, the development banks are generating multiplier effects on the market, which are, which are ex extremely important. So maybe you could, you could tell us how you see the the future of the public intervention in Greece to accelerate the, the movement in the country? Well, I'm sure you'll have a chance uh, in the panels that will follow to discuss in more detail uh, what we're doing uh, on that front. What I can tell you is that when we took over, the development bank was essentially a, sort of a shell without any real, without any real content. Uh, and uh, in, in less than three years, it has established itself uh, as a very, very important presence in Greece. Uh, also very useful during COVID, uh, where we um, uh, supported uh, Greek businesses uh, in order to make sure that we protected uh, um, uh, jobs. But now as we move uh, out of uh, COVID, I think the, the, the potential um, uh, for initiatives, both on the debt side, but also on the equity side, uh, are, are very significant. And uh, for me, uh, this is also uh, a very interesting personal story because some of you may, may know that I started my, uh, my career uh, in, uh, uh, in, in Greek business in private equity and venture capital in the late 90s, uh, uh, the early uh, 2000s at the National Bank of Greece. We set up the first uh, technology fund uh, at the time, the first uh, uh, incubator. Uh, maybe we were ahead of our time. Uh, 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 when, we, when we took these um, uh, initiatives, but certainly now uh, there is more need for innovative financial uh, instruments. Uh, there is more need for um, venture capital and private equity in Greece. I'm happy that many of the people you know, I was working with at the time, uh, you know, have, uh, have moved, they've stayed in the, uh, uh, in the field and now we do have a vibrant um, venture capital and private equity um, uh, seen in Greece, but we also need more growth capital. We don't just need, you know, um, uh, venture capital. Uh, we've made it more attractive for angel investors to invest at the very, very early stage uh, in, in Greek startup um, uh, companies. But I also do believe that there is a lot of potential for mid-cap Greek companies to attract uh, equity capital um, uh, and to um, uh, sort of make the next step forward. These are companies that have been able to survive uh, and thrive during very, very difficult times. I think they've really given the term resilience a new, uh, a new definition. Uh, they are present in various different uh, sectors of, uh, of the Greek economy. Uh, and they're looking to um, to grow. And if you look at the you know the big the big trends, one of them I think is going to be you know the consolidation of supply chains and sort of the, the concept of strategic autonomy and this whole idea of uh, of reshoring Greece is strategically positioned to take advantage uh, of these uh, uh, trends. And as also many European or French companies would be looking to strengthen their supply chains closer to um, uh, closer to home. Uh, and as they start looking less at Asia 
uh, and more at, uh, at Europe, I really encourage you to take a very close look at what is happening uh, in Greece. And also when we look at you know, new sectors where we can add, um, uh, where we can add value, uh, look at the renewable um, um, uh, sector. Uh, for example, we want to contribute more to the value chain of renewables. We will be publishing, for example, uh, in the next month, our new legal framework for offshore wind. Can we uh, imagine a cluster of offshore wind infrastructure, for example, uh, in, in Greece rather in, uh, in, in other countries? All these are uh, ideas which I think are worth um, uh, pursuing. But you know, at, at the end of the day, what I do want to point out for those of you who are thinking of investing in Greece, this is not just about you know, you know, a stable and reform-oriented government. This is not just about a country that has natural uh, comparative advantages, um, such as you know, the sun uh, you know, or the, the wind. Uh, uh, it's also about a country that has tremendous um, um, human capital. And this is, is particularly important for me. If, if you look especially at the tech uh, sector, I think what, what many foreign companies saw uh, in Greece was the quality uh, of, of, our, um, of our engineers. Uh, still relatively cheap by uh, European uh, uh, standards, extremely hardworking. Uh, every single company that has invested in Greece um, uh, has only good things to say about the human capital of the country. And the other dimension which you should not forget uh, is that um, uh, Greece, quote unquote, lost 500,000 um, uh, young people who left during the crisis. These are extremely talented, uh, young risk takers who left Greece and for the first time they're looking to return to Greece. So in this global competition for human capital, we have an advantage that we have Greeks who are outside Greece who want to return to Greece um, uh, now. And I think this, this puts us uh, in, a, uh, in a relatively uh, good position. But at, at the end of the day, for us the real goal is to make sure that we stay the course. We, we deal with lots of crises. Um, uh, the, the recent one being particularly challenging when it comes to energy prices. But at the same time, every crisis is, is an opportunity. Um, uh, and when we look at what's happening with energy now, of course, in the short term, we will support uh, households and businesses to absorb um, as much as we can from the increase in price. But at the end of the day, um, the, the concept of the, of, of the green transition becomes more important not only from, uh, uh, from a climate point of view, but also from a geopolitical uh, point of view. We need um, more, um, uh, uh, more uh, energy independence. In two days, I will be going to Western Macedonia, which was the area where we uh, ex traditionally extracted lignite to inaugurate uh, the biggest photovoltaic plant um, uh, in, uh, uh, currently uh, in operation uh, uh, in Greece. So every crisis presents opportunities, and my encouragement to, especially to foreign investors, is to take a good look at what is happening uh, in Greece, because you will find, I think, extremely uh, interesting opportunities, and I think also qualified uh, people on the on the finance side, on the uh, but also uh, at the level of the government to support you in terms of exploring what is happening in the Greek market. I can tell you that in the, in the portfolio of BPI, I mean, we have uh, equity shares in uh, 1,000 companies in France. So there are a lot of them which are interested by Greece at all, at all levels, you know. Some, some very big listed multi French multinationals are working on, on Greek projects. Yeah? And, uh, and we have Greek originating entrepreneurs which are working with us uh, for long, uh, but also SMEs. And also, and also startups, and also funds you have here in the assembly, funds which have decided to uh, start operations in Greece. You know? So I think that's very good news. I would say that uh, the Greek entrepreneurs are always welcome in France. Uh, last year we had a big event, uh, like every year in October, we, we gather uh, more than 50,000 entrepreneurs in a, in a stadium in Paris, and you're mostly welcome, Mr. Prime Minister. By the way, it's this, uh, next uh, October 6th. And uh, we had a delegation of, uh, of Greek entrepreneurs that came with you. Uh, they were mostly welcome. So there is a lot to do. I'm, 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 I'm really convinced that we need to uh, improve uh, the, the possibilities of, uh, of cross-country business. I would say, of course, relationship, but business. To the point that uh, we, we should, we should uh, have the ambition to have a Franco-Greek, Franco-Greek, German, Franco-German, Danish, Greek funds with multinational teams people which are working together, uh, sharing different cultures with a portfolio which is spread across all the countries. So that may be the, the good moment because we, we are running out of time to, um, 
re-say that today we're, we're announcing uh, the agreement that we have signed with the HDBI, with TC, with Exfondon, with KFW, and BPI France to deploy 3.3 billion euros of growth capital um, across the continent, collaborating on the deal flow, sharing the due diligences, and again, that's the main word of today, accelerating uh, the, you know, the, the, the stance and the, and, and the process of uh, instructing the deals to the, to the most benefit of the entrepreneurs. And if I can add one, one, one final point. I think you're right to point out that we, look, we need to look more systematically at cooperation, cross-European cooperation at the level of SMEs. The big multinationals, you know, the French multinationals, you know, they have been present in, in Greece. I think they know the landscape pretty well. But if we are to talk about a true European common market, it is the SMEs that need to get into, uh, into closer uh, cooperation. And right under the big multinational, there are thousands of companies in Greece and in France and, you know, the other European countries um, that uh, are present that need to, to, to understand that, you know, at the end of the day, investing in another European country should be very natural to them. It should not be uh, something very, very complicated. At the end of the day, this is our common market. This is our uh, advantage. We need to create scale. Uh, at the European level, we're, we're not there yet. If you look at you know, all the stats when it comes to the big tech companies, it is worrisome. But scale is going to start you know, by cooperation at the smaller um, uh, level. That's where the new you know, global players will, uh, will emerge. It's a, new, it's a new epoch. That's what Emmanuel Macron said uh, two days ago, by which uh, you know, before everybody wanted to go to China or to Brazil or to India, far away, as far away as possible. And now we're rediscovering the neighbors. We want to do business with you guys. You want to do business with us. And, uh, and this is the future for Europe. That's what we want. Growing together. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you.